You can get a copy of my free ebook Technical Analysis Basics with one click. There is a link in the description box down below. So maybe you're new to technical analysis or you've been using it a while. There's a series of articles in this book that'll get you using some more technical analysis tools pretty much right away. It's written for beginners to intermediate, super easy to use. Hi everybody, this is Lara from pureelliotwave.com with an analysis of the British pound US dollar pair. I'm going to do some Elliott Wave counts, only big picture on the monthly chart, and then I'm going to have a look at technical analysis monthly, weekly, daily with you. Tomorrow I'll round out the picture for the British market by looking at FTSE. I wanted to get both of them done today, but I just haven't been sleeping and I'm just too tired to cope with two extra free analysis today. So let's get one done. Oh, this was a really difficult wave count. I've started my wave count from here. Now I haven't put the grand super cycle waves in. It could be either A, B, C or it could be 1, 2, 3. My only conclusion so far is from this high to the last low for the British pound US dollar pair, it doesn't subdivide as an impulse. At first you'd want to label it 1, 2, 3, four, five, but four overlaps wave one and four would be a running flat. It just doesn't make sense, doesn't work, doesn't meet Elliott wave rules. So what does, if an impulse doesn't work, and then I looked at an ending diagonal, that, okay, this was my attempt at an ending diagonal, kind of works to this last low. If we put this down here, it technically works, but it looks all kinds of wrong. Well, actually, yeah, it, the diagonal should be contracting. It is four is shorter than two, uh, three is shorter than one, five is shorter than three, but there's just too much movement below the one three trend line to take that idea seriously. So it won't fit as an impulse. It won't fit as a diagonal. That leaves corrective structures. It can't, it's obviously not a flat. It's obviously not a triangle. What else could it be? It could be a double combination, but Again, that doesn't really look right, but this is the only Elliott Wave structure at this stage I can see that fits and meet all Elliott, meets all Elliott Wave rules. So the double combination starts here. The first structure in the double over here is labelled Cycle Wave W. The double is joined by a too brief, too shallow X in the opposite direction. For combinations, X wave should end somewhere up around there. This is really brief and shallow. And then the second structure in the double combination begins here and ends here and it subdivides as a regular flat correction A, B, C. B hasn't moved beyond the start of A but it's over 90% the depth of A and it subdivides very well as a zigzag. From this high to this low this downward movement fits beautifully as a zigzag and from this high, low to this high this upward movement labelled primary B also fits perfectly as a zigzag. So that means cycle wave Y could be a regular flat correction which should be complete if this is a regular flat. And the problem with this is it has a downward slope and Y has moved reasonably beyond the end of W so it hasn't achieved its purpose of taking up time and moving price sideways. So this wave count meets all Elliott wave rules but it doesn't really have the right look. If this is correct though and it's the only Elliott wave structure I can see that fits this movement, it could be over. Cycle wave Y could have ended at the low in the month beginning 1st of September 2022. It's possible there could have been a super cycle degree trend change in September this year. That's possible. It's a huge trend change though so we absolutely need to wait for evidence that that low is sustained. We'll look and see if there is evidence in technical analysis. For now, in terms of Elliott Wave, that idea absolutely needs a new high above 1.42500 for confidence. If we don't see that, this is a possibility and I don't have confidence in it because this is why. It's possible that primary wave Y could be incomplete from the slow from sorry from this high to this low primary C could be incomplete as an impulse intermediate one two three four five to continue two may not move beyond the start of one above 1.42500 now it is possible and I did I'm going to work with you on this one actually at the moment I did also try and have a look to see if cycle wave Y could be 
an incomplete zigzag. And this is the problem. So B doesn't move beyond the start of A. Primary wave B could be an expanded flat. Now the problem here is intermediate C. It has to be a five wave structure. And this first wave, it looks like a three wave structure. Now this is possible and I would have to go down to lower time frames to check the subdivisions of minor wave one. But you have to agree it doesn't look like a very good five. Minor two should be down there. It doesn't look like a really good five. It looks more like a three. It could be an impulse at lower time frames. But this movement from this low to this high fits better as a zigzag with a short A and a long extended C wave. But this labelling now avoids the problem that the other monthly chart has of the double combination. This labelling sees the whole structure beginning up here at the start as a double zigzag. W, X, Y. First zigzag in the double, double joined by a three in the opposite direction. Second zigzag in the double, labelled primary A, B, C. Primary B has not moved beyond the start of A, it fell a little bit short. And primary C now is to be a five wave structure. Now it could be over here, or again it could be continuing lower as an impulse like this. And within primary C, intermediate 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 above 1 1.42500. So a new high above that point tells us that it's very likely that this low is going to be sustained for many, many years. And that the British pound US dollar pair could be in an absolutely strong and long sustained for over a decade new bullish run. It's been in this bear market overall since 2007. So this is possible and it resolves the problem that the first wave count the double combination has because double combinations and double zigzags are quite different structures. When it comes to Elliott wave corrective structures there's more than 23 if you count all of the different combinations with the variety within them and all the different kinds of triangles. But there's two main groups. You can group all of those different corrections into two groups. You've got the zigzag family which are akin to sharp pullbacks and strong sharp bounces they are movements that have a clear counter trend direction usually quite quick and the other group is time consuming sideways consolidation so you've got your zigzag family which is single double and triple zigzags they all should have a strong counter trend slope and then you've got everything else which is combinations flats and triangles and so double combinations are labeled WXY but they are part of the sideways family they should have an obvious sideways movement taking up time but double zigzags are labeled WXY but they should look really different they should look like single zigzags and so they should have a clear counter trend slope this does especially if it continues lower so this makes more sense now the only reason I have a problem with it is the subdivisions of intermediate C. So that's my conclusion for the Elliott wave count for the British pound. We need to see a new high above this point to have confidence that this low is in place because this wave count is possible and this wave count is possible. Until that happens this is also possible depending on your degree of labelling for the last downward movement. On the monthly chart I notice it's quite and I checked, I noticed there's a piercing candlestick pattern here for the month of October. And the month of September has a bullish long lower wick. I calculated the length of the real body for October. September has closed beyond half of the real body of October. And so this is a bullish piercing pattern. It has pushed from volume so we can have some confidence in it. And in fact when you look at volume. It's been really strong for the last two upward months. So that is bullish and supports the view that we need to consider that this low for September could be sustained in the long term. The bear market that's been evident since 2007 could be over. That is possible. There is bullish divergence between price and on balance volume. From this low back down here, 1st of May 2020, to this low here, price has closed lower and uh, closed lower in September, but on balance volume is substantially higher. That's bullish. It's, that is what you would expect to see around a major sustained low. 
ADX tells us that the downward trend reached very extreme. It was above 45 and above both DX lines and then we have some consolidation and then again currently there is a downward trend at the monthly chart level but remember ADX is a lagging indicator here based on a 14 month average so if there has been a trend change in September we ADX won't catch up with that for over a year and it's only been two and a bit months now. RSI reached oversold at the slow back here and if you look back a little bit further there is now double bullish divergence on a long term basis between price and RSI. I checked with a, I'll show you, an extended horizontal trend line just to make sure this peak pivot low is a little bit above this one so there is double bullish divergence not strong between these two but pretty obvious from this pivot low down here for RSI back in March 2009. So as price is moving lower RSI is failing to make corresponding lows downward there is a lack of strength and downward movement again that's exactly what you would expect to see around a sustained low. We don't see the same bullish divergence between price and money flow index and both RSI and money flow index are in neutral territory so there is again room for price to fall there's also room for a new upward trend to continue. ATR is showing some increase as price it declined as price started the last wave down from the high in July oh sorry June 2021 ATR was declining and then once it gets into February 2022 ATR starts to show an increase ATR is still showing an increase as price starts to move higher but this is again an average to range based on the last 14 months data and so it's not if if there has been a change in volatility it's not going to catch up because it's an average based on past data so it is a lagging indicator but it is still showing an increase and stochastics is in neutral territory on the weekly chart there is also a bullish piercing candlestick pattern the close of this candlestick is beyond halfway through the close of the body of the prior candlestick within this week beginning 25th of September 2022 there is also push from volume so again a bullish candlestick reversal pattern on the monthly and the weekly chart with support from volume volume for this last completed week the current week is incomplete the last completed week beginning 11th of December 2022 is strong though and it's pushing price lower so for at least the short term I'd expect to follow through from that and some more downward movement but apart from this week the volume profile from the low in September at the weekly chart level is bullish not very clearly bullish though on balance volume would have broken below a long held resistance line let's bring that in this line has a strong slope but it is long held and it has a few tests although they're not perfect I would count these as tests maybe these although not so much but it has broken above resistance so that would have been a bullish signal and that would have happened uh, about three yeah three weeks after the low so not particularly useful and not a particularly strong signal there's no bullish divergence on the weekly chart level between price and on balance volume ADX at the weekly chart level reached very extreme for the prior downward trend it's now declining telling us there's no clear trend the positive DX line is just crossed above the negative there's a potential trend change to up but as yet no clear trend indicated at the low in September uh, in the low in September there is no short term bullish divergence between price and RSI RSI did reach fairly deeply oversold and that's happened a few times before it happened back here in January 2015 some consolidation and then more downward movement until there was bullish divergence and then a more sustained upward rise so that could happen again it's possible that this is just the early stage of the end of the downward trend it's possible that price could continue lower and then start to exhibit swing uh, bullish divergence between swing lows that's possible money flow is neutral RSI is neutral ATR showing an increase as price moves higher so well now we get down to the shorter term we can see that there is an increase in this upward movement in volatility that's really good to see for a bullish case and stochastics overbought so with RS, uh, ADX indicating no clear trend and stochastics overbought we should be looking for resistance and probably a pullback to begin 
This is the low, the date of 26th of September 2022. This low completes a bullish hammer candlestick pattern. We've seen a few though before here, like here this is almost a dragonfly doji, but this could be considered a hammer, didn't lead to much. Bullish engulfing pattern didn't lead to much. So just because there's a hammer candlestick pattern doesn't mean that low has to be sustained. And that's one of the problems of candlestick patterns. They tell you that there's going to be a change, but they don't tell you to what direction and they don't tell you how long the new trend will last. So there's three directions price can go in, up or down or sideways. And a candlestick doesn't tell you if price is going to go from up or down to the opposite direction or just to sideways. And it doesn't tell you how long the next movement may last. So it could indicate just a sideways movement for the short term or it could indicate a full 180 degree reversal that could be a new long term trend. And in order to try and tell which of those two scenarios it may be indicating, you need to put it into context with everything else. Off the low, there was some strong upward movement with push from volume, this day particularly, two days after the low. But the strongest session is the session of 15th of December 2022, a strong downward session a bearish engulfing candlestick pattern, a huge bearish pattern with strong push from volume. And so I would expect following that a continuation of downward movement at least until support is found. Support may be found probably around about 1.164 or so. On balance volume is moving up with price off the low, confirming those new highs. ADX declining, indicating no clear trend at the daily chart level. The positive DX line remains above the negative. There is, if ADX turns back up again, there would be an upward trend indicated. At this stage, no clear trend in either direction. Again, ADX is a lagging indicator. RSI not exhibiting bullish divergence at the low for the short or mid term. And so it could be that we're going to get new lows and we're going to start to see before a sustained low is formed, it could be that price could continue lower and then start to exhibit that mid-term bullish divergence with RSI. There is still room for price to move lower. RSI is in neutral territory. It's above the halfway mark, so there's plenty of room for downward movement. Money flow index, also not exhibiting bullish divergence at that last low in September. ATR declining after some increase for the early part of upward movement and now ATR catching up this the lagging indicator and overall showing some decline. Although for this part of movement here, this upward movement ATR did show an increase, decline toward the end. So with volatility increasing in the middle of this upward movement and declining at the end, I would expect a little bit more downward movement, at least for the short to mid term and stochastics neutral. So how low the pound goes for the next movement down is going to tell us which of these scenarios, bearish or bullish, is correct. That's it from me with your British Pound analysis. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support of every single person who subscribes, comments, and especially in my membership at Pure Elliott Wave. I thank you for your support. And I hope everyone's looking forward to an awesome Christmas on Sunday.